Welcome back everybody to Serpent Series Class 7 out of 10 Colors and When to Use Them. Picking your color palette. For any new project you're starting, whether it be sewing, plasti dip, or leatherwork, it's important to know your color palette as early on in the process as possible. For this class, I'll be focusing specifically on garb making, but these suggestions and tips are just as valid and translate over to any medium. Highlights, accents, and base colors are the foundation of a dynamic piece of art. That's why when choosing my color palette, I like to follow the rule of three. For every base color, I will have an accent color and a highlight color to accompany it. As an example, if I'm using royal purple as my base color, I will accent it with black or gray, and then use lavender or a different lighter shade of purple as a highlight color. If I'm adding a second base color, let's say orange, I would use red or green as the accent color, and yellow or white as the highlight color. When making your garb, we use fabric, thread, or even paint as your accents and highlights. Which brings us to textiles and patterned fabric. Through the years, I have discovered that I really prefer using pattern fabric in my garb making, especially with my applique. I will use a woven textile fabric as my base fabric, and then use patterned cottons for the applique. When picking fabric, I make sure to take into account my rule of three from the previous section, so that everything blends well together. Pattern fabric is also a fun way to incorporate a theme into your piece. If you look closely at my pirate themed coat, you'll see skulls, ship wheels, mermaids, or even jellyfish. If you're lucky, you may even be able to find a matching pattern available in different colored fabrics. Be sure to take into consideration the scale of the pattern as well. A large pattern might clash with a more ditzy pattern if you're not careful. Layering your applique. After picking your fabrics, you need to take time and consider how you're going to arrange them for your applique. It is definitely easier to stack your applique than it is to add your fabrics together, but there are some problems that can arise from this. If you place multiple layers of fabric and fusible interfacing on top of each other, you may make things too thick to zigzag stitch into place. Another setback when it comes to layering is show through from your bottom fabric. If my top layer is white, but my bottom layer is orange and green, that white fabric might not be opaque enough and the bottom layer might show through. If I can't layer my fabric and need to line up edges or arrange my applique like a puzzle piece, I like to overlap just the tiniest bit of fabric, just large enough to hold the two pieces together, but small enough to fit entirely underneath the zigzag stitch. After figuring out how you're going to layer fabrics, it's time to think about applique line work. Picking your thread color is just as important as picking your fabric. You have the option of matching the color of your thread to your fabric exactly, or using a different color or hue entirely. A good applique stitch will make your designs pop, but a bad applique stitch can make your whole garment look cheap. If you match your colors, you can set your sewing machine to a longer step as the fabric won't show through the stitch. But if you are using a different color, you need to take shorter steps with your stitch and take your time when going around curves or corners, as even the slightest gap in your thread will be glaringly obvious. Thread is the perfect place to use your highlight colors and your accent colors. Picking which colors to match and which colors to contrast will add texture and depth to your overall piece. You can even create shadows and light sources with your stitch by playing with different hues of color. Contrasting light and dark. Correctly contrasting your colors not only adds dynamic to your piece, but it also makes everything more visible and easier to read. Have you ever seen a drawing of a polar bear in a snowstorm? No, because white on white on white is just a blank piece of paper. If you don't contrast your design in your base garment, you're going to end up with a lot of hard work for something people can't see from more than a foot away. If your base garment is a dark color, you want to make sure that your design is a lighter or brighter color. If your base garment is pale or light, you want to do the opposite with the design. If you've chosen contrasting colors, but the design still looks muddy, you can use your applique stitch to contrast it even more. Accents. Pockets, buckles, buttons, these are just a few options for adding accents to your garments. When adding accents to your piece, it's a good idea to use the same colors and themes that are already present in your piece. 
as adding a different color will only show up on this accessory will make your piece feel disconnected in Slapdash. Personally, I like adding collars to all of my tunics and surcoats, and I use my accent fabric with my main fabric as the lining. I want to thank everybody for coming out, not only to this class, but to the previous six classes as well. This is the last class in the sewing part of the series. I will be doing a sewing Q&A class in two weeks where anybody can come and ask me some questions that I might have missed or maybe even already answered in the series. All questions are welcome. Next Monday will be the last class in the Bardic portion of the series, class 8 out of 10, Competitive Bardics 202, where I'll go over everything that's needed to put on an award-winning Bardic performance. Thank you again. Until next time, see you later.